Good day. Here is a happy birthday practice for Nadine in 2022. Let's begin by stretching from shoulder to shoulder. Nadine told me the other day after Pilates class that she misses yoga. And she likes 20 to 30 minute practices, which I think is true for quite a few people. So we'll begin by just swaying back and forth and stretching one shoulder skyward away from the opposite foot. Just opening the myofascial network of the body. Let the elbows move. Nadine said she would like some shoulder opening, some twisting today in more of a yoga practice. But for me, stretching the myofascia first and maybe a little bit more qigong fluid motion feels really healthy in my body. So let's come up, arms in a T, inhale, the left palm up, the right thumb under and around, warming up the rotator cuffs. Feel into the back arm, how that side of the rib cage pulls away from the spine as we turn away from it. Really good to get the ribs moving away from the spine a little bit. And then come back to center and relax into your mountain pose. Stand into the whole circumference of your heels and then find the circumference of your big toe ball mound and your pinky toe ball mound. Lift your toes, lift your arches. Let yourself rest into your back body. Let your tailbone reach straight down like the third leg of a stool and let the lowest ribs lift away from the pelvis. Broad across your shoulder girdle, shoulder blades on the back body. Lift your gaze a little higher to a mountain top in the distance. This doesn't shorten the low back. We keep the low back rib lifted. And we take a few fluid breaths. Now let's interlace the fingers behind the head. Lift the base of the skull with the thumbs. Wrap the elbows forward around the head. And really resting into the Third leg, tailbone, and the heels, lift the elbows. Really stretch along this outer edge of the shoulder blade up to the elbows. Rest the head back into the hands, traction the base of the skull, and relax the shoulders away from the base of the skull. Standing back bend. Good stretch for all the forward fold that we do. And then reach the arms long and stretch them back behind you. And exhale, release your arms to your sides. Okay, let's either lift up a TheraBand. If you have tighter shoulders, you can use the TheraBand. Inhaling up to the point where you can stretch the TheraBand a little into a good stretch and coming back down. Or some of you may be able to stretch up and bring the arms back down. If your shoulders are tighter, it's nice to have a TheraBand because it can stretch. You can also let it slide through. If you want a little more control over how much stretch you have, use a yoga strap. Inhale up and hold wherever the stretch is good for you. And just breathe into it, resting the heels back. And then let the arms come back and down. And in, back up. And exhale down, fluid breath, inhaling the lift, exhaling the release, inhaling, and exhaling. <clears throat> now inhale up with your right arm and bend the elbow. Let the right arm come behind your back. Float the left arm up. <clears throat> this is the most important part of this exercise. Rest the head of this arm bone back and then bring the arm around to the strap. If you don't do that, a lot of times I see this, which is really unhealthy for the rotator cuff. Rest the arm back before you come to the strap. Better to have the hands wider apart and those arm bones resting back than try so hard to lift the lower hand up that you 
really contort the shoulder and you feel pinching. So let it stay open and then reach up with the lifted elbow down towards the earth with the earthy elbow and let your ribs rest back. Let your head and neck rest back. Some of you might be more comfortable with your arms out a little bit. That's okay. You can even play out and in to open the shoulders. Some of you will be in and comfortable enough to circle the top elbow and draw a circle on the sky and circle it the other way. Wherever you are is okay, but we're not gripping with our toes. The four corners are planted. And then from here, if you'd like to, you can open the arms long and take them behind you in a kind of bow and arrow bow stretch and then release. Take the other arm up, stretch it skyward, bend the elbow, float the arm up, draw it back at the head of the arm bone and bring the hand around to the strap. The elbows come out to the side and upward, out and upward. Rest your head, your heart, your pelvis back. Fluid, three-dimensional breath. Find the arm position that's best for you. And if you'd like to draw circles on the sky, then do. Three, one direction, and then three, the other. It's a good start. And then take the arms back behind you in a stretch, if that feels good in your body, and release. Bring the strap forward again, and inhale up, and either pause and come back down, or come over. Finding the place that you stretch well, breathing into it. Tailbone still grounding, opening the front tissue of the chest. And exhale, release. Okay, let's take our ball and take it to the wall and place it in front of the sternum, standing in your Tadasana, feet below you. Inhale. Lift the ball up the wall without throwing the pelvis forward. Open across the shoulder girdle, shoulder blades on your back. Lift the heart, lift the low rib ring as you ground the tailbone, ground into the heels. So the back body is strong and long, shoulder girdle resting away from ears, long neck. And then exhale, release. Take the ball behind your back. Let the arms open out wide. Take the head of the arm bone back, not just the wrist, the head of the arm bone back. Open across the arms. Root the feet, lift the arches. Inhale up the legs. Inhale up the spine. Lift the heart. Fluid breath. Letting the head rest back, the base of the skull lift. Ah, can you find a position where you can stay in this opening pose? So don't throw yourself so far back into it that you're gripping. Find a place where you can kind of relax and hold steady. So you're not, you're not totally relaxed, you're working, but you're relaxed enough that you can sustain. and release okay now let's bring a chair in or a piece of furniture you can have this right against a wall if you like or if you have the steadiness you can have it in the center of the room like i do on a mat make sure there's nothing to fall into around you and step one foot up onto the chair the other foot directly underneath you and inhale your hands to your heart Exhale, root down into both feet. Inhale, into your pelvis, up your spine. Exhale, twist towards the leg that stepped up. Inhale, length. Exhale, twist. Perhaps you take a few breaths to get there. And then bring the outside of the front hand against the femur and the left arm open. If that doesn't feel good, you can just place the palm on. 
Broad across the shoulder girdle again. Broad into the shoulders. Eyes, we can look out the far corners of the eyes. And then exhale, float back around and step down. Pause in your mountain pose. Stay with your breath and step the other foot up. Hands to the heart, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, root your feet. Inhale, lengthen again. Exhale, twist slowly away from you towards the lifted leg. Inhale, bring the outside of the front hand against the femur, the other arm open behind you, broad across the shoulder girdle. Feel into your shoulder blades on the back body. Breathe in to the front chest, to the heart center, to the twist. Breathe a massage along the column of the spine. And then exhale and unwind. Step down. Inhale, let your arms lift. Exhale, Utkatasana, fierce pose. Inhale, place your hands on the chair seat, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step your right leg back and your left leg forward towards the chair. Come into your crescent, lower the back heel and float up into your Virabhadrasana one. Lift the low rib ring away from your pelvis, rooting towards the back heel. Exhale, hands to the heart. Stretch them straight out in front of you. And inhale. Open the right arm around. Let your thumb fo- your gaze follow your thumb. And exhale it back to center. Inhale. Open your left thumb. And exhale it back to center. Bring your hands to the seat of your chair. Step back for a plank. Long spine. Fluid breath. You could be doing this on blocks as well, but I really like the chair sometimes for this because we keep long. And then step the right foot forward, lower the left heel in. Lift into your Virabhadrasana one. Lift up through the pelvic floor. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale them out in front of you. Inhale. Follow the left arm open. Exhale. Close palm to palm. Inhale. Gaze on the right thumb. Follow it open. Exhale. Around palm to palm. Inhale. Open. And exhale. Closed. Inhale. Open. And exhale. Closed. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale, and exhale, and hands to the seat of your chair. Step back, plank. Feel into your length and strength. Now you can buy these folding chairs pretty easily, and they're wonderful. Step back, bend your knees, lengthen your spine, a high downward dog. Lift the pelvis and stretch back behind you. Three-dimensional breath. And then step forward, shoulders over your hands. <clears throat> so you're in a tabletop. And right here, go ahead and inhale your cow. And exhale your cat. And following your own breath, take a few more cycles of inhaling cow. And exhaling cow. So people who have knee issues and can't be on hands and knees, this is a way to do these poses. It's also a nice way to come into Virabhadrasana 3. Lift your back leg. Lift. Let's all together lift the right leg. Release the left hand off the seat of the chair. And let the left arm lift onto your back body, shoulder blade onto your back. Now I'm not lifting this arm so high at the wrist that this head of the arm bone pops forward. I'm lifting the head of the arm bone and keeping the shoulder blade on my back, letting the wrist rest a little lower. 
Perhaps you can lift to the fingertips <clears throat> of the hand on the chair. Perhaps you can float that arm off. Stop anywhere along this trajectory. Perhaps you can lift the arms overhead. And then rest the hands on the seat. Bring the foot back down and inhale your calf. And exhale your calf. And inhale your calf. And exhale your calf. And one more. When you come into the cat this time, take a few more breaths, stretching the spine. Perhaps moving the pelvis a little to stretch into the spaces between the vertebrae. And then inhale to neutral. And pause. And float your left leg up. And let your right hand rest off the chair. Float the right shoulder blade onto the back ribs, lifting the shoulder, the head of the arm bone, higher than the wrist. Activate your core. Imagine that there's a vase of flowers on your sacrum, so we're not tilting. Fluid breath. Some of you can come to fingertips on the chair. That may be enough. Really concentrate on length from tailbone to top of head. Some of you can float the hand off like a wing. I don't know if I can. And bring the arms overhead. Stretch from heel to top of head. Shoulders relax away from ears. Hands to the seat. Foot to the floor. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. And step back. Downward dog. Stretch the pelvis back away from the hands. And step forward. Heels under sit bones. Second metatarsals parallel. Float into your Utkatasana fierce pose. Gentle twist to the right. Gentle twist to the left. Gentle twist to center. Release your arms and let them swing. Stay in your Utkatasana, strengthening your legs. And swing skyward. Interlace your fingers the funny way. Thumbs to the base of the skull, rest the head back. Tailbone rooting. Lift the gaze and the heart. Rest the shoulders away from the ears. Fluid three-dimensional breath. And release to neutral. Okay, last pose here will be revolved triangle. So turn your chair so that it faces forward on the left side of your mat or bring your block in or your stack blocks. Remember, you can always put blocks like this to have them higher, okay? And then Step your right foot forward and your left foot back. So the right foot is even with your blocks or this leg of the stool. And inhale, lengthen skyward. So we're facing forward down the mat. Our heels are at least as wide as our sit bones. And we exhale forward with our long Virabhadrasana three spine and bring our hand down to our prop. It's the left hand on the prop, the right wing open, shoulder blade onto the back body, wrist not as high as shoulder. From the pelvis, root into your feet and bring the wing open, stretching across. So you're twisting towards the front leg and you're drawing this front leg hip crease back away from your armpit. You're lengthening the neck away from the shoulder girdle, shoulder girdle relaxes towards hips. And then we rest into our three-dimensional breath. And exhale, the wing releases. And we float back up tall and step in mountain pose. And then we take our props to the other side. So better to have higher props than try to come too low and close off the energy. Yoga is about getting energy moving, about unifying the body. 
not about pressuring ourselves or stressing for some kind of yoga journal photo uh, image of what perfection is. Feel it from inside your body. Rooting the feet down from the pelvis. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, float the spine forward. Bring your right hand to your blocks. Left hand beside the front left leg. Float the left shoulder blade onto the back body. And follow the wing up into the twist. Draw the right hip crease away from the shoulder girdle. Plug in your uh, outer heel. Fluid breath. I think I might have said right hip crease away. I want you to draw the front leg, the left hip crease, away from the shoulder girdle. So you're stretching this side body long. Now really stretch across your arms. Ground into the outer heel. And exhale, release your lifted wing. Float skyward. Exhale, hands to the heart, feet beneath you, mountain top. And come into a few fluid breaths. Now let's come into one more forward fold. For some of you, that'll mean using the chair. And you'll step back from the chair towards a wide-legged downward dog here. And what we're looking for is that your tailbone's a little higher than your sacrum. And your spine gets to traction into its length. This helps us to avoid compression between the vertebrae, which is the reason for a lot of spinal health issues. So we traction pelvis away. Others will be able to bring their hands down to the floor or down to blocks like this and stretch back. Wherever you are is okay. Your hands could also be on a wall or on the couch. We stretch back through the pelvis. We rest the pelvis away from the arms. Now, if your shoulders aren't comfortable in that position, you could rest your forearms on the chair seat or on the blocks and still stretch the pelvis away from the shoulder girdle. Some of you will be able to fold into a full prasarita padottanasana, a full forward fold. And if it feels good to you here, you can let your spine and your body Sway across, one knee bending and the other bending. Letting yourself sway a little side to side. Inviting the hips to open and the spine to release. Fluid breath. And then come back to center for another full three-dimensional inhale. Relaxed exhale. Hands to your hips, knees slightly bent, unhinge. Come back up to standing and relax into your breath. Standing Shavasana. And then come on down to the floor. Bring in a bolster or a folded blanket. And have a chair accessible for you to put your legs up. Maybe you're putting them onto a couch. Bring your calves up onto the chair. <laughs> and then lift up and bring the bolster in. Izzy always knows this is the part of the practice she gets to kind of relax into a little. <laughs> Lay back on your back, pelvis lifted. Now... For small torsos, like Nadine, I'd recommend just a folded blanket under your pelvis. Pelvis a little higher than heart, a little higher than head. This is called the waterfall pose in modern day yoga. Let the blood and lymph flow from the feet back towards the pelvis. Blood flow from the heart into the thyroid and thalamus glands into the pineal and pituitary easily because we've reversed the hug of gravity. 
Let yourself rest back into your three-dimensional breath. Relaxing on the exhales. Relaxing your face and your jaw, your neck and your shoulders. Relaxing your belly and your pelvis. Letting the pelvis grow heavy. The front body rests onto the back body. Relaxing the arms, the hands, the legs, and the feet. See if even the mind can rest, awake and attentive, noticing. Relaxing into noticing. And then gently hug your knees back in towards your chest. Place your feet on the chair. Lift up off your bolster or blanket. Rest your hips to the floor. And slowly roll yourself over and come up to a comfortable seat. Let's inhale our hands to our hearts. May yoga help us open body, mind, and heart. Happy birthday, Nadine. Namaste.